go ahead. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so my topic will be on rethinking 10-2 visual fields for early glaucomatous diagnosis. So traditionally, we were thought that visual field declines in the periphery in glaucoma. And only when there is a tubular vision, then 10-2 was actually audited to, ordered to monitor progression. There was an old school of thought where damage near fixation can happen only in the later stages, which is actually wrong. Let's see why. Take, for example, this patient, a clinically diagnosed glaucoma suspect. An early visual field defect may actually be missed on 24-2. Whereas the same defect can be exaggerated or easily picked up on a 10-2 as seen on the right hand side. So in 30-2 and 24-2 what happens is in 30-2 there are 76 points and 24-2 there are 54 points. But the real thing is only 12 points are checked in the 30-2 or 24-2. If we count in the central 10 degrees of the 30-2 or 24-2 only 12 points are checked whereas on the right hand side you can see that in the 10-2 field 68 points are actually being checked. So that really makes a lot of difference. As you can see on the right hand side, red arrow showing the 68 points being checked. Again, coming back to the same case. So early visual field effect may be missed on 24-2, same picked up in 10-2. And as Manosar was rightly pointing out, always correlate the 24-2 with the RNFL thickness, structure function correlation. Similarly, when you see the 10-2, make sure you go back to the ganglion cell inner plexiform layer and correlate the 10-2 with the ganglion cell inner plexiform layer. Again, in this patient, what we easily would have missed in an RNFL and 24-2, we are picking up it in a 10-2 on a ganglion cell inner plexiform layer. That's what structure function correlation really plays a lot of role in that. So ganglion cell layer damage can happen in the earlier stages as well. And it can be sometimes the only manifestation of early glaucoma. Drans was the first to point out this because 30% of the retinal ganglion cells and 50 to 60% of the primary visual cortex is actually supplying more information in the macular region. And it's anatomically proved and there are many papers which are coming out with this publication by Curcio et al. and uh, Curcio and Allen which started in 1990. The real problem is when we see a patient like this where 24-2 is perfectly normal and we see the RNFL, we are thinking it's okay, it looks to be normal. But when we do a 10-2 and there is something that is picked up, that's when the reality changes where we can early diagnose that patient and start therapy. So again, the main thing is there are three permutations and combinations that we will experience in our practice. One is the red block, which is very, very important, where 24-2 is normal. And when we do a 10 2, we may be picking up the damage. And the other two are more or less not very significant, where there is abnormality in 24 2. We'll obviously we'll end up getting an abnormality in 10 2 as well. Or the traditional type C is where the tubular vision happens, right? Because the periphery gets lost and then the tubular vision happens and then the 10 2 gets involved. That's the traditional school of thought. That is the inferior figure or the C figure. So the percentage is 6% of the eyes without 24 2 field loss exhibits 10-2. That's what literature has said. And it's really astonishing to see that among ocular hypertensives, 35 percentage of them revealed only 10-2 damage where 24-2 was normal. Suspected glaucomas revealed, 39 percent revealed only 10-2 damage whereas 24-2 was normal. Early glaucomatous field, 61 percentage had only 10-2. Uh, defects and no 24-2 defects. It's very, very uh, significant because the whole classification, the whole severity of glaucoma can actually change because the central vision is actually getting damaged and this can change the whole way glaucoma is being approached. So again, uh, it's very important, the definition, the severity, the functional implication, everything changes. And how do we go about it? Alternate between 24-2 and 10-2 because in reality, it's very impossible to order both in a single visit. Maybe we can alternate in once every visit, six monthly visit, once they can do a 24-2, once they can do a 10-2. Another important point is this is an animation created by me where there is a single black point in your 24-2. If you see a single black point in your 24-2, now this is an indicator that you can go forward and do a 10-2 because only 12 points are checked in the 10 degree. Now, when we check 68 points, we get more information out of that. So how to go about another thing is, if there is an inferior temporal slit defect in your fundus, if you are seeing, again, the study done by Zhang et al. says, do 10-2 for these patients. There is more prone for functional damage in this kind of patients. Again, clinicians should consider performing 10-2 even in established glaucoma because the diagnosis can change, the severity can change, the misclassification will not happen. And 10-2 is very important to set an important baseline 
just like 24-2 and a fundus photo and OCT, it is very, very important. So this is uh, the thing that I talked is my publication that is coming in the February 2023 issue in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology. How 10-2 really incepted, this is a proofread file. I'm just sharing you priorly. Uh, what do we know from existing literature? And we have also talked upon a potential blind spot in Anderson's criteria because Anderson's criteria doesn't really give us the 10-2 into the gameplay. So uh, thank you once again for this opportunity. Uh, and uh, last to summarize, correlate structure and function, as Mathur sir was pointing out, that's what is very important. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prasanna. Yes, ma'am. We'll always repeat it, ma'am. Yeah, one single uh, visual field, yeah, we'll always repeat, ma'am. As the next speaker gets ready, uh, just one uh, question for uh, for Venkatesh is, yes, you know, I think that, uh, the baseline 10-2 is gaining in currency. Yes, because, you know, Journal of Glaucoma, the uh, January 2023 issue, also said that baseline 10-2 testing definitely, in many cases, I forget the numbers, uh, it, it uh, you know, predicts the occurrence of abnormalities in C24-2. Mm. So I'm not really sure at this point because uh, the tradition has been to do C24-2 as baseline, whether, as you said, uh, C10-2 alternate and C24-2. Yes, sir. Maybe it's a bit of both is where but we'll be some, it, I think it's a new concept that is gaining in currency. And I yes, think sir. Time will tell us what should be that. Yes, sir. With time, we'll know. Yes, sir. Uh, basically, <coughs> initially when we are taught that time, it was, speaker on the it, it was said can, that can the... Uh, just yeah. one second, I just call the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Is Dr. Sunil Kumar around? Yes, sir. So please be ready with your PPT, sir. So basically when we were a student, that time it was taught that uh, the glaucoma affects per from periphery to the center. But the recent theory is, uh, is that uh, the glaucoma can be multicentric in origin. So in the periphery also there could be some defect which can be picked up with the 24-2 and the central also, if it is a multicentric origin, then the center also there will be something different particular source. So we should get both the things done, especially the initial period. So that is the bottom line uh, as the panelist uh, comes with a consensus that 24-2 altered with 10-2. Yeah. Am I right, sir, for the early glaucoma? So that's the take for this uh, session, uh, this 